Hello dear subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is Vivs from Slidenet here. In this video, we are going to take a look at an example of the this keyword which we discussed in the last video. I'm sure you guys were not so clear about what the this keyword does in the last video. So here, let's take a nice example and see how things work on NetBeans. So what I have here is nothing great, just a class this keyword and a main method inside along with another class that says int number. Now let me make a method here, we're going to say public void display. Inside this method, let me make another variable called number. So at this point, what I have is int number equals to 1, which is the instance variable, and int number equals to 5, which is a separate local variable. So let me try to print number and see which number gets printed by saying system.out.println. Now if you go to our main method, make an object of some class, call the method display on the object by saying some class, Dot display. Let's see what the output comes with. As you guys notice, it prints 5 over here. So the question is, whenever there is an instance variable and there is a local variable with the same name, the local variable gets more priority in terms of deciding who the method is going to work with. In other words, whether you print it, whether you add it, whatever you do with it, this local variable is going to hide the instance variable that you have. So the first use of this keyword is to access this variable over here. Now if you guys remember, this keyword points to the current object. So let's just print that by saying system.out.println. Try to see what comes out. Again, let's go here inside our main method. And again, I'm going to say system.out.println and I'm going to print some class over here. So in other words, inside the display method, I'm printing the this keyword itself outside. And here in my main method, I'm simply say, printing the some class object out. So here, let me make a statement that says some class so at this point, this print statement says some class equals to the value of the object and this keyword equals to the this keyword out here. So let's see what this prints on the screen. Again, shift F6 to run. And as you guys notice, take a careful look. This keyword equals to waves and slider dot some class at the rate 59727745. And that is the same number over here at the bottom, which means this keyword currently equals to this object some class over here now let me make another object and show you what happens i'm going to say some class s2 equals to new some class over here then in s2 i'll say display and again i'll print the same thing so at this point there are two objects inside my main method and i'm simply calling display on both of them and i'm printing some statement out here below both of them so let's run this and see what happens so the first time we go here inside our display method, as you guys notice, 5 is printed, which is nothing but this system.out.println number inside our display method. Then this keyword contains the value of the first object, some class, because that is the one who is calling the method. Remember, implicit parameters, which we discussed earlier. And then some class is the same thing that you see here. The next time, when we say s2.display, this time, our this keyword will be the second object S2. In other words, you can notice clearly that S2 has some value and this keyword is having the same value over here, which is 292E2FBA, which is the address where the object is actually contained. If you guys remember our discussion about printing objects in the earlier videos. So the this keyword, in other words, refers to whichever object is calling it and it is actually equal to that object. That means you can use the this keyword by saying this dot and as you guys notice the number field can be printed by saying this dot number so now if I print the value of instance variable and let me remove these two statements so now to print number 5 we simply say system dot out dot print and a number but to print the value of this instance variable number that belongs to a particular object we say this dot number so when some class dot display is executed this keyword becomes equal to some class object Therefore, this dot number is some class dot number, which is one over here. Again, when S2 is being called S2 dot display, S2 becomes equals to this keyword. Then this dot number is S2 dot number that we have here. Again, you can give each number variable a different value. Let me show you that as well. If you guys notice, even though I have set int number equals to one here inside my sum class, now I'm explicitly giving some values. I'm saying some class dot number is 10, and then I call display. Here I'm saying s2.number is 20, then I call display. Now let's see the output for this. 
So initially, when we say some class dot number equals to 10, and when we call some class dot display, it's gonna go here inside the display method print number, which is this local variable over here. Then for the instance variable, remember some class is the object which is equal to the this keyword at this point. So when you say this dot number, it is some class dot number, and that is why 10 is printed over here. The same way when you say s2 dot number equals to 20 at that point again when you call s2 dot display take a look what happens it goes inside the display method int number becomes 5 system dot dot print and number is printed as 5 over here as you guys notice then instance variable this keyword becomes equal to s2 that we have here so s this dot number is nothing but s2 dot number which is 20 and that is why 20 is here inside our output window so this is how the this keyword works in Java and the use you can have with that is as you guys noticed we can have different variables with the same name now let me again show you how constructors work with the this keyword with a simple example again so again we have the same sum class over here this time I'm, I'm gonna add a constructor here that's gonna be sum class over here this is gonna take an argument int number now again very carefully notice over here the int number that I have passed here as the argument is the same name as what I have as the instance variable here and this int number that we declared inside the parentheses is only alive for the duration of this constructor over here within these two brackets right here so inside this if I say number equals to number is that how I'm gonna give values no because whenever I use the word number it's gonna point to this int number over here I want to store the value of this number variable inside the instance variable number so in other words I'm gonna say something like this this dot number equals number in other words transfer the value from the number local variable from right to left inside the number instance variable that is referred by saying this dot number over here so this is another use of the this keyword and you will find this application everywhere no matter which program you're using whether it's J2EE, J2ME, Android, everywhere you're gonna find constructors that are using instance variables and local variables of the same name and they say that the instance variable should be equal to the local variable that's exactly what this statement means again you could have anything over here you could say something like string s over here and you could just keep it like that and then you can pass another parameter string s and both of them could have the same value remember instance variable equals to local variable that's the policy you follow so when you say this dot s that is the instance variable and when you simply say s that is the local variable transfer the values from the right to the left and this is how the this keyword works now let's take a look at something we were talking about constructor overloading and see how that can be shortened so what I have here is the modified version of the sum class which is what we are working with to demonstrate constructor overloading and the use of this keyword it has instance variables int x int y boolean z char c and if you guys notice go down there are one two three four constructors here first one takes no arguments x is zero y is zero which is both integers here z becomes false because it's a boolean and c is space over here then if you go down to some class it takes one argument in the next version and as you guys notice we use the statement by saying this dot x equals to x in other words make the instance variables value equal to the local variables value and then the others are saying this dot y is 0 z is false c is space and stuff again the same thing happens int x and int y are taken here they are given as values in these two statements but z is false and c is space over here and the last const constructor that we have is taking all the parameters and giving values now if you guys notice here this is a whole lot of code for making four constructors if you had 10 20 constructors which happens sometimes in the big programs out there then you'll be writing a lot of mess out here and there and it's gonna be hard for you guys to maintain so is there a shortcut for this well yes there is you need to use the this keyword on the biggest constructor so what is the idea in such situations the shortcut is that you take the largest constructor which in our case is this one that takes four arguments call this biggest constructor from every other constructor smaller than this in other words remove all the statements here from the default constructor some class we're gonna call this big constructor to do all the work for us by using the this keyword I'm gonna say this put brackets here the first value that you pass 
will be int x which is gonna be 0 from, from here the second value is int y which is again 0 the third value is boolean z which we are gonna pass as false over here fourth value is character c which is gonna be space over here and that's all we need to do now again if you go to the second constructor here again you don't have to write all this call the biggest constructor in other words it's gonna be this keyword now if you guys notice here we already have the value of x from the parameter list so simply pass that x here since we don't have a value for y pass the default value 0 pass false for the default value of the boolean pass space for the given character again in this third constructor no need to write any code remove all these statements call the this keyword and call the largest constructor using the this keyword again here we're gonna say pass the value of x as it is pass the value of y as it is but since we don't have a boolean pass false over here and since we don't have a character over here simply pass space over here so in other words when this statement runs this constructor over here is going to be called these arguments 1 2 3 4 are going to be passed inside 1 2 3 4 and they are going to be assigned over here as values to your object so this is the way you're supposed to write constructors in Java now there is one thing very important if you go before this and if you say system.out.println there is a sweet little error it says call to this must be the first statement in constructor so remember that there cannot be any statements above this statement that you have here so anything you have to write should be below this inside the constructor so this is how you can use the this keyword to write efficient constructors where the largest constructor performs all the work and all the other smaller constructors simply call the biggest constructor and say hey I have this two values but can you put the remaining two values for me this constructor says hey I have only one value can you put the remaining values for me and this constructor is like okay man I have nothing with me so you do all the values that you want and this is how things work so hopefully you guys have understood the two main uses of the this keyword in constructor overloading and instance variable hiding if you like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below thanks for watching we'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day